Welcome to The Chop Shop. My name is Dion Tucker. I'm a jazz trombonist based in New York City, and in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about why focal dystonia is one of the best things that's happened to me. So what is dystonia? Dystonia is a neurological disorder characterized by involuntary muscle contractions and postures. Embouchure dystonia is a type of dystonia that affects brass and woodwind players. It targets the muscles in the face, mouth, jaw, and tongue. Common symptoms of embouchure dystonia are air leaks at the corner of the mouth, involuntary tremors and muscle contractions, as well as pain in the neck and jaw area all of which I experienced. Some other symptoms I experienced was a numbness in my upper lip, as well as shortness of breath when I played, and I lost about a full octave from my range. I started experiencing these symptoms in mid-June of 2019. I was preparing to go on tour with the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. We had a two-week residency in Sao Paulo, Brazil, which I was extremely excited about. Leading up to the tour, I had all my normal preparations. I practiced, I worked on the music, and I was ready to go. Once we got to Brazil, we had a couple of rehearsals leading up to the first concert. And I noticed in those rehearsals, something was a little bit off with my chops but I didn't really think about it too much. I kind of know that when I travel internationally, it takes about two or three days before my lips would feel normal. After those two or three days, things still didn't feel quite right. But I knew that if I started worrying about it or thinking about it too much, that could make the problem worse. So I plowed through. After about a week of performances, things really started to spiral and get worse and worse. Now, at this point in time, I did speak to a few members in the orchestra who gave me some good advice as to not really think about it and just kind of move on. Everybody said I sounded normal, but I knew I wasn't myself. When I'd stand up to take solos, I was very picky and choosy about what I played. Um, my range was greatly diminished and I just didn't feel like I could execute things in how I could normally execute them. So at this point, I was kind of embarrassed and started shying away a little bit from doing things that I normally do. And at the end of the tour, I was pretty eager to get back home and figure out what exactly was going on. When I got home, I started practicing right away. I got in the front of the mirror and I was really focused in on the corners of my embouchure because I saw there was tremors happening and there was a lot of air leaking out of my corners, which is something that hadn't happened to me before. Um, after about two days of doing that, I was in a lot of trouble. I could barely play the horn, which is something that was extremely scary to me. In my 28 year career, I hadn't had any chop problems at all. So now I had no idea of what was going on. At this point, I reached out to a colleague of mine who sent me a couple of books written by Lucinda Lewis. So one was called Broken Embouchures. The other was called Embouchure Rehabilitation. I read these books right away and I saw that all of the symptoms that were described there was exactly what I was dealing with. So it gave me some hope to know that there was some information out there and this is when I really started learning more and more about embouchure dystonia. Now, one of the tips in the books was to take a couple of days off. Just give yourself a few days off the horn and then start over again, which I did. Those two days were really, really difficult because I started questioning everything. Am I ever going to play again? Will I ever be able to play on the same type of level that I had throughout my whole career? It really almost had me thinking that my career was in jeopardy. However, I got back to the horn after a couple of days and I just started um, with a couple of the exercises that were in the book. One of them was block buzzing, which is blocking the end of your mouthpiece 
and so that no air can escape and really just kind of forming your embouchure how you think it should be. That was helpful. And I also started icing my lips at the end of all of my practice sessions, which was also helpful, but I was still experiencing the same issues in my neck, in my jaw when I played. I was getting excruciating pain, especially in my jaw area, which was just frightening. After about nine days, I reached out to a good friend of mine named Sam Burtis. He's a great tenor trombone, bass trombone, and tuba player. And I said, Sam, my chops are not working anymore. I have no idea what's going on. Now uh, he said to me, Dion, you haven't lost your ability to play, you've lost your timing, which was something I had never really heard up to this point. And he kind of explained to me that when we play, we don't really think about just our corners, just our breathing. Everything is one unit and it all fires at the same time. So this changed my mindset and it gave me a new direction to stop thinking about the little things and start focusing on things more holistically. Uh, he turned me on to the Caruso technique, which is something I had heard about, but I didn't know too much about how the technique actually worked. I was fortunate to be able to sit down and take a lesson with Sam, and he showed me some of these Caruso exercises, the magic six notes, the seconds exercise, and all of these things really did help me, and I stayed on this path for about eight or nine weeks also within that span of time, I changed quite a few things in my lifestyle. I started exercising more. I started meditating before I practice. I changed my sleep schedule to be more consistent, which is something I had never really done. And I stopped focusing on all of the little tiny things on just my corners. And I really did take that timing advice to heart. Um, after a while, everything kind of started to come back, and I felt pretty good at that point in time, at least good enough to be able to return to gigs, albeit on a limited basis. I remember my first gig back was with the Etienne Charles Big Band at Dizzy's Club Coca-Cola in New York City, and I played third trombone, and I was so happy to be playing music again, and the first note I played with somebody in harmony, it just lit up my heart and I really was optimistic that I can get back to where I was before. It was about two and a half months into my recovery at this point and I was starting to feel pretty good. My range was coming back, I was getting back to playing gigs, and most importantly my confidence was starting to come back, which is something that was lost throughout all of this. In a lot of the reading that I had done to this point, there was one name that kept coming up. That name was Jan Kagerice. Jan is somebody who's helped hundreds of brass players recover from different types of injuries, and I was pretty sure that she could help me out. Fortunately, I was able to book a lesson with Jan online, and it was really a life-changing experience. One of the goals that she set was for me to be better than I was prior to when all of this stuff happened, and she absolutely delivered on that. After about eight to nine weeks, I was back to 100% and I was confident that I could still continue to get better. I realized that being off of the bandstand, being away from music, how important music was to me. And to be able to function at a level that was higher than I was at before was something that gave me great optimism. At this point in my career, I feel like the possibilities are endless. Not only do I have a new relationship with music, but I have a new relationship with life. And that is why I say having focal dystonia is one of the best things that's ever happened to me. There's not a second on the bandstand that I take for granted, and I'm so blessed to be able to share my art with audiences all over the world. Here at the Chop Shop, I want to share techniques and strategies that will help you play more efficiently and execute music more confidently. That's it for today's video, and I'll see you next time at the Chop Shop.